Take your dealership to the next level with over 6,800 on-air interviews with dealer and industry leaders. CBT News, dealer's most trusted source for news, content, and analysis. Welcome to CBT News with Cheyenne Malone. Welcome to Wednesday. I'm Cheyenne Malone. Thanks for watching CBT News. Let's get started. Kevin Dunbar, the Director of Facilities for Stellantis in North America, is leading initiatives to reduce the company's climate impact by minimizing waste in production materials. At the Toledo assembly plant, where Jeep Gladiator and Wrangler are manufactured, the company found they could reuse cardboard partitions up to 10 times, saving nearly $250,000. A similar effort at the Warner truck assembly saved $127,000 by reusing cardboard boxes up to four times. These efforts align with Stellantis' Dare Forward 2030 plan to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2038. Through the reuse program, Stellantis has prevented over 1,360 cubic meters of packaging materials from going to landfills and have saved over $375,000, including diverting 35 tons of cardboard from landfills in 2023 alone. Volvo Cars is launching a new supply chain tracker that enables customers to trace the origins of key raw materials in the batteries of its electric vehicles amid growing scrutiny of the environmental and social impacts of these materials. Developed with British tech firm Circular, this innovative, quote, battery passport will feature verified data on raw materials, including their origins, weight, size, chain of custody, and recycled content. Starting this year, the Passport will be available via an app or QR code for Volvo EX90 models in the European Union and US using Circular's blockchain technology. A settlement has been reached in a product liability class action lawsuit in California federal court concerning 2011 through 2022 Hyundai and Kia vehicles allegedly lacking engine immobilizers, making them prone to theft. The settlement in the case titled in Ray, Kia Hyundai Vehicle Theft Marketing, Sales Practices, and Product Liability Litigation includes a fund of $80 to $145 million for compensating losses from theft and attempted thefts. It also offers a free software upgrade for eligible vehicles to prevent unauthorized starting and reimbursements for related costs, including up to $250 for lost income, $50 for steering wheel locks, and $350 for key fobs. Vehicles not eligible for the software upgrade can receive up to $300 for anti-theft devices. However, claim forms must be submitted by January 11, 2025, with the final approval hearing set for July 15, 2024 at the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California. U.S. Senator Joe Manchin has urged American companies to sue the Treasury Department over its implementation of local content rules for clean energy tax credits under the Inflation Reduction Act. During a Senate Appropriations Committee hearing, Manchin accused Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen of having the content requirements from the law's original provisions, thereby harming U.S. manufacturers. He vowed to support these lawsuits with an amicus brief, asserting that Treasury's rules, including a provision allowing another year of Chinese graphite use in battery production, undermine the IRA's goals of reducing reliance on Chinese supply chains. Yellen responded by expressing the Biden administration's shared concern and willingness to discuss technical solutions with Manchin. This development follows Manchin's recent departure from the Democratic Party to register as an independent, criticizing partisan extremism. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with John Fitzpatrick, the president and CEO of Force Marketing, to discuss what dealers need to focus on during the summer selling season. Take your dealership to the next level with over 6,800 on-air interviews with dealer and industry leaders. CBT News, dealer's most trusted source for news, content, and analysis. Last time you were in, you shared with us a statistic that uh, I found interesting, which was some in a 30 day period of time on Google, some 30 million people searched EV. Yeah. So that was going back to uh, December. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, there were and, and we're still seeing that. And, and so here's the other thing we're seeing, Jim, is that you know, pick the number. Uh, I think in that case, it was 30 million folks that were interested in an, in an EV. Mm -hmm. They're taking a longer 
time. Okay. Right? So the journey is longer. Mm -hmm. You know how to buy a nice vehicle. Right. You know how to maintenance a nice vehicle. Yeah, of course. You've had that forever. Of course, right. You don't with EV. So it naturally makes sense that the shopping behavior online for an EV right. consumer that's considering that consideration time is right. much longer. Yeah, makes and sense. So, right, and so, but often our normal funnels are like, oh no, they went into consideration then they dropped off. No, they're still considering. It's yeah. just taking them a little bit longer. Right. And so more ad dollars need to be put in the right channels to drive that consideration to the next stage, which sure. you know, you know, is or as close to purchase as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we, we've got some data that we'll share with you from our, our folks at S and P. One thing we're big on, uh, as I sort of opened with, is we've got great data providers that 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 share with us what's happening in the industry. Mm -hmm. That's only great until you do something with it, right? Yeah. And so it's big on us. The way I lead the organization and our client success team is that let's digest a bunch of data that we get from our own team, our own data scientists sure. off audience IQ, but also from S&P Global and JD Power sure. and, and the like to really understand where those opportunities are and then match our strategy, match our creative, match our deployment, our media treatment, if you will, right. across the different channels accordingly. Sure. And so one of the things that we found interesting was that um, only about a third of folks uh, returning to market, so RTM is sort of uh, the, the metric they use, return to market okay. buyers, right? Which is huge from conquesting perspective, yeah. right? You want that return to market, okay? Yeah. They're coming off lease or right. they're in the right segment of right. ownership to get a new vehicle, sure. right? That return to market, right? Only a third of them are staying in the same segment. Interesting. Hmm. It is interesting because oftentimes in marketing, you market to folks That's right. from a conquest perspective, segment to segment, Yep. right? So what we're finding is that open those segment classes up. Yeah. Right. While they might be, you know, in in uh, you know Toyota Rav Four, instead of just looking and putting them in your segment option, give them the one up and the one below. Give them a sedan. Right. Give them a you know full SUV. Give them a truck. Sure. Because they're considering all of those. The loyalty on the segment is super low. Okay. All time low. One, okay. Only one third. So you got two third opportunity. Wow. To yeah. conquest by showcasing the other segments. Right. If you're trying to hang on and you're trying to retain. That's another opportunity, right? Yep. Don't just tell them, hey, we want to put you in a new RAV4. Right. Just because you're currently driving RAV4. That's right. Share with them all the other segment options that you have as a brand to keep that brand loyal. That's right. Well, that does it for us for today. But remember, it is easy to stay up to date with the most recent news and trends influencing the retail automotive industry. All you have to do is follow us. We're on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and X, formerly known as Twitter. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Cheyenne Malone. CBT News, your number one resource for auto industry news and content.